Hello, everyone. How you guys doing tonight? You know, we're here. You know, there's a scripture that says heaven and earth will pass away. But God's word won't. There, you know, we're living in a world with a lot of opinions and there's a lot of issues. But there's one thing that will stand for eternity. And that's the word of God. And it's so important to fall in love with the Bible. I, I've learned this, that to say you love God, is, is to love God, you got to love his word. And we're here to study the Bible, the word of God. And, and, and Jesus said it best when Satan was trying to tempt him to turn stones into bread. He was making them focus on his physical need. And then Jesus flipped it. And he said, yeah, I'm hungry. I haven't eaten for 40 days. But he said, you know what's more important than bread? Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that, that proceeds out of the mouth of God. What he was saying was, what's more important than physical food is spiritual food. It feeds your mind. It feeds your heart. It feeds your spirit. And the only way to be strong spiritually is to read the word, study the word, and put on the mind of Christ. I'm going to understand that. There's a lot of deception happening. And if you don't know what God's word says about it, this is what happens. When you don't know the truth, you fall for any lie. Are we here to study the word? Come on, are we here to study the word? What God says about the last days. Now, I want you to get this. We're going to be talking about the last days, and this is for sure. What we're, what we're going to be talking about is going to happen. God's word does not return void. It accomplishes everything that he set it out to do. The Bible is different than every other book. Most books write about history. The Bible talks about history, but it also talks about the future as if it's history. That means when God said it, it's already done. How many understand when God said it, it's already, God called things that are not as though they were. You might be overwhelmed right now, but the Bible says there's more for you than are against you. Come on, there's more for you than are against you. There's going to be a day that we'll be with the Lord forever and ever and ever in a place where there's no pain, there's no suffering, there's no death, there's no depression, there's all the sickness that we're experiencing won't be there. Aren't you glad, come on, that you're on the right side, you're a believer. Tonight, you can have a brand new start tonight. And it begins with choice as you're hearing the word of God. Be ready to believe it, receive it, apply it in your life, and receive the abundant life that God has for you. How many believe that God has an abundant, a full life for you? All right, good. So we're going to be talking about the end times tonight. And, and this is a great, I'm so glad that you're here tonight. Everybody online, thank you for tuning in. We finally got our lights up. We're almost at the end of service. Praise God. Amen. For the most important part, the word of God. Um, I'm proud of you being here. Um, we're gonna have we're gonna have some more services talking about the end times tonight. We're gonna focus on the signs of the end times. That means, are we in the end times? Are the signs that Jesus talked about are we actually experiencing right now? Could this be the end, or are we near the end? Now we don't know when Jesus is coming, but there would be some signs that Jesus gave. And we'll talk about tonight. How many want to know about the signs of the end times? We're just going to talk about a few of them tonight. Father, we just thank you. I thank you for every person that's here. I thank you, Lord, for everyone that's listening. And I thank you, Lord, that we have victory. We're more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us. We resist everything that's resisting us in the name of Jesus. The word of God says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. And the devil comes with thoughts. We don't accept the thoughts of inadequacy. We don't accept the thoughts that were failures. We don't accept the thoughts of condemnation. We resist it in the name of Jesus. And I just thank you, Lord, that tonight we will know that you love us, 
You want, to, you want to save every one of us. You want us to have a whole life. And may tonight be a brand new start for somebody. All things pass away. Everything becomes brand new tonight. We're believing it. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. End time signs. I would just want to review a little bit about the biblical timeline. I don't know if they could put that up. But right now we're in the current church age. This is after Jesus came. He ascended to the Father. And the disciples saw Jesus die. They saw him buried. They saw him resurrect from the dead. And then he spent time with his disciples after he died, giving them last minute instructions. Then he ascended to the Father and the disciples were looking up and the angel that was there said, why are you looking up? And he said this, the same way that you see in him ascend, he will come. And it was prophetically saying he left in the clouds, but he's coming back in the clouds. He's coming back. It's not over. But that was the beginning of the church age. And right before Jesus ascends, he gives his instructions, the great commission, that go and make disciples of all nations, preach the gospel to the whole world. The gospel is simple. Jesus died for our sins because the wage of sin is death. He suffered for every wrong thing we've ever done. That means that there's punishment for sin. Jesus, God sent his son because he loved us so much to suffer and die for our sins so that we can be forgiven. So our debt can be paid. You guys understand that there's no free lunch. There's a scripture that says, God should not be mocked. Whatever a man sows, he reaps. That means for every action, there's a reaction. And, and when we do wrong, there's consequences for sure. And God's a just God. So he has to make sure that every sin is accounted for. So he put the sins of mankind on Jesus. Jesus pays the price, conquers death, resurrects from the dead. He now speaks to the disciples, ascends to the Father, and then he gives his disciples instructions. This is what I want you to do. I want you to go to the upper room. It's, it's called the upper room. 120 of them went up there. He goes, and wait for the baptism or the filling of the Holy Spirit so that you will be empowered to be witnesses. So it starts pointing that we need the power of God to be a witness or be a light in this dark world that we'd be so bold that we could be martyrs for what we believe. We need to bring that back now because we need to get some, we need to be Christians full of the spirit, bold with some backbone. That means that you're willing to stand up even when there's resistance or persecution. Are there any believers here full of the spirit, you're willing to stand for the word of God even if it means you being persecuted? Do you know your persecution, what it does, if you are persecuted for what you believe, it sends a message to the world, you really believe it. There are those that might persecute you, might be the ones that you're going to reach because they're looking to see if it's real. And then when you are willing to lose it all so they can be saved, they're going to say, they must be really believe this thing. Are there any believers, last day believers, that are saying, I'm willing to live for this, but I'm also willing to die for this. Amen? <laughs> so now, we look at the church age after Jesus resurrects from the dead. He ascends to the Father. Now we're in the church age. This is a time of mercy and grace. This is a time for people to get saved. The Bible says, today is a day of salvation. There's going to be a time where we can call on Jesus to be saved. But the church age is moving into another age, and we're going to start entering into the next stage is the rapture. And the rapture, we covered this last week, is the catching up of the church. Jesus is coming back for every single believer. There will be a day that every single believer leaves the earth. The dead in Christ will rise first, and those who remain, believers, will be caught up in the air with him. There will be a huge exodus of believers out of this world. Some people here are ready, and some people aren't. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians 4.16 to describe that day. For the Lord himself, who? Will come down from heaven with a commanded shout. 
with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God. Now, Jesus himself, he's not sending a representative, he's coming. But when he comes back, I want you to get this, he's coming at that point to begin judgment. So what's the first judgment? The separation of believers from non-believers. And he says, first the believers who have died will rise from their graves. Then together with him, them, together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds, caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. So encourage each other with these words. Now they're writing to believers in this time. And it's an encourage each other. I know you're being persecuted. I know it's tough. I know it's difficult. But encourage each other. Jesus is coming back. And he's going to, we're going to be with him. And once we're with him, we'll be with him forever. That chapter will be shut. No more temptation for us. No more evil for us. No more having to deal with the devil for us. Come on. No more sickness for us. It'll be over. No more depression. No more fear. No more loneliness. Praise God. There's a day coming when Jesus is coming back for his people. Everyone in the world at that time is going to know Christians are missing. There's going to be a lot of lukewarm believers. These are people that believed, but they were never sold out. They believed in Jesus. They believed he was a savior. And maybe they even said a little prayer in a church service. But they never surrendered their lives to the Lord. And they're going to wish, what was I exchanging my soul for? But they're going to know because they heard this message. And they're going to be left behind. And when they're left behind... The light bulb's going to come on and they're going to say, I still got one more shot, but it's going to be hard. So this is going to happen. So we encourage each other with this future. Jesus is coming for all believers. After the rapture, all the believers will be with the Lord forever. Warning, not everyone will be ready. Warning, I'll say it again. Not everyone will be ready. Let's read that scripture and review. Two men will be working together in the field. One will be taken the other one left. This is all a saying that those that are not ready will be left behind. Two women will be grinding a flour mill. One will be taken, the other left. So scripture gives two categories, men and women. Men, there'll be men not ready. And there'll be women not ready. And the ones that are ready will be left, man or woman. So you too must keep watch with an exclamation point. Now I want you to know who said this. Jesus said this. This is in red. He said this day is coming. This is before Jesus dies for the sins of mankind, buried and resurrects. He's warning. He's, he's here, but then he's going and he says, I'm coming. He goes, when I come back, be ready. Watch. Be alert. It's easy to get caught up in your problems, get caught up in life, and have no spiritual alertness. How crazy that your problem has overwhelmed you and blinded you, or your pleasure has overwhelmed you and blinded you, where you no longer see your eternity. Let's think about that. You don't know, for you don't know what day your Lord is coming. Do you know? No one knows. Understand this. If a homeowner knew exactly when a burglar was coming, he would keep watch and not permit his house to be broken into. You must be ready all the time. For the Son of Man will come when you least expect it. This is what he's saying to believers. You must be ready all the time. He's even talking to us. We must be ready all the time. What he's saying is, there could be people in the church that aren't ready all the time. You're a weekend Christian. Not, not even weekend, Sunday morning. Or Wednesday night. And you feel like I'm ready on Sunday morning, but all week long you're acting like the devil. 
You talk like him, you walk like him, you lust like him, so maybe you are from him. Say, Pastor, stop being so hard on us. No, I want, to, I want you to make sure you're saved. The Bible says, the Bible says those who practice, those who practice righteousness are righteous, and those who practice sin are of the devil. It's impossible if you're born again to continue practicing sin. I'm not saying that you can't mess up and confess it, but there's something within you that doesn't allow you to stay on the ground. There's something that tells you, I got to get up from this pit. I know I messed up, but I'm calling on the name of the Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Cleanse me, Lord. Set me free from this sin. I don't want to live like this. Come on, believers. We love living for Jesus and we hate sin. That means there's going to be people not ready. You're not ready if you're participating in practice in darkness. Look at Romans 13, 11. This, this is all the more urgent. For you know how late it is. Time is running out. Wow. I, I will tell you this. Time's running out for you, whether you realize it or not. You're not getting any younger. You know, right now, I'm like 50-something. If I double my age, I'm halfway done. But all I'm saying, I'm not getting younger. I'm moving towards time is running out. There's one thing that you can't get back, and that's time. You can lose money, get it back. You can lose a house, get it back. You can lose a car, get it back. You can lose your hair nowadays and get it back. <laughs> Bosley will help you with that. But you can't lose time and get it back. Time is the only thing that once you withdraw 24 hours, it's gone for eternity. And there's going to be a time on earth where your time on earth is done, but it could happen even before that. Jesus Christ could come back. Time is running out. Look what it says. The night, look, it's, wake up for our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. When you first believe your salvation was near, but you've been believing for a while, your salvation is even closer now. The end of your life is getting closer. The second coming of Christ is getting closer. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. <clears throat> the night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. So remove your dark deeds like dirty clothes. What? She said, do some inventory of your life. If there's some dirty deeds that you're involved with, remove them like dirty clothes. It's time tonight for us to look at our clothes spiritually. I don't want nobody stripping naked here and just embarrassing everybody. I got to grab this clothes. No, we're not, we're not doing that stuff. I talk about your spiritual condition. All right. Look what it says. So remove your dark deeds like dirty clothes. <clears throat> Let me get some water, please. And put on the shining armor of right living. Put on the shining armor of what? So he said, take off. And you know what that means? Repent. That means if you know that there's something dirty in your life, don't put up with it. Get rid of it. And if God's telling you to get rid of it, he's going to help you get rid of it. Come on, somebody has to take out the trash tonight. Come on, somebody online. It's, th it's time to forget about justifying stuff. It's time to get rid of some stuff. <coughs> Let's look at it. Hmm. Put on shining armor of right living because we belong, to the, uh, we belong to the day. We must live decent lives for all to see. Don't participate in the darkness of wild parties. Oh, okay, so what's the dirty clothes? He's not making a list, wild parties. Now, in some interpretation, wild parties is saying there's their parties with sex in it. Like you're partying to find someone to sleep with that night. 
So you're going to hook up. That's why you're twerking early. Oh, Lord. I don't know why I said that. But uh, the dance moves nowadays have become sex on the dance floor. I mean, understand that. Christians should not be twerking. Don't be practicing on YouTube either. Well, I'm just doing, I'm just doing a TikTok. No, stop it. Wild parties. Wild parties are where, where it's wild because there's orgies, there's sex attached to it, and drinking and drugs and drunkenness. Or a sexual promiscuity, immoral living, or quarrel and jealousy. And said, clothe yourself with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And don't let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires. What he's saying is don't even go there in your mind. Cut that stuff off. You know why you have a, we have strong desires to sin? You think about it a lot. If you stop thinking about it, how can I indulge my, my evil ways? You'll start starving that idea, starving your mind, and you'll start getting set free from that thing. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise. Come on, we're living, the, we're living the last days. There'll be those that are ready, those that are not. All it's saying is you don't want to be twerking when Jesus comes back. You don't want to be in a hotel room with speed with somebody and Jesus comes back. You don't want to be with a 40 ounce getting drunk out of your mind when Jesus comes back. You don't want to be sleeping around trying to be the player on match.com.org. Some of us are match.com.org players. You're just right now, just swipe, swipe you. Come on, there's some stuff going on in churches nowadays. Right? Well, it's just, uh, it's just once in a while, I know. Don't, I, I won't say once in a while. Be careful, Jesus come right back there, right at that time. Let's take a look at this video. This is a church service, and it's a depiction of the rapture happening. There are those that are ready and those that are not. Tonight, someone's going to exchange their dark clothes, and they're going to put on righteous living. They're going to be forgiven, set free, and given the power to live a new life. And you're going to do it for Jesus and for Someone else that's looking at your life and saying, man, is that real? It's real. Look at the change in my life. Let's take a look at this video. Jesus Christ is coming back for his church. Put it loud. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 42, watch therefore, for you do not know the hour your Lord Turn off the is coming. I want you to know, church, that Jesus Christ could come this month. Or he might come next week. Or he could even come... As the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, as we're studying these scriptures, this is going to happen. And it could happen just like this. It could be a Wednesday night just like this. Boom. Boom. When will this happen? When will it happen? Jesus said soon. Jesus himself said it, that he's coming soon. In Revelation 22, 7, he says it three times in the same chapter. He says, look, I'm coming soon. Blessed are those who obey the words of, of prophecy written in this book. In Revelation 22, 12, he says, look, I'm coming soon. Bring her my reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds. 
And Revelation 22, 20 says, yes, he who is faithful witness to all these things says, yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, to, come Lord Jesus. He says it three times in the same scripture. Why is he said it three times? He's emphasizing if Jesus is thinking he's coming soon, shouldn't we think he's coming soon? So when is he coming soon? He's coming also unexpectedly. In 1 Thessalonians 5.2 it says, For you know quite well that the day of the Lord's return will come unex uh, unexpectedly. Like a thief in the night when people are saying everything is peaceful and secure. Then disaster will fall on them, and suddenly, as a pregnant woman, labor pains begin, and there will be no escape. That means if it happened here and people are leaving, you can't jump. Either you're a believer or you're not. And if you're a believer, you're going to be transformed in the twinkle of an eye from, from mortal to immortal. Boom. That's going to be awesome. I can't wait till that day I'm flying away. That's going to be crazy. All right. Now, the disciples, after Jesus was sharing some of these things about the last days, they started asking, okay, when is this going to happen? Almost 2,000 years ago, the disciples of Jesus asked him the same question, point blank. When is it going to happen? Look at Matthew 24, 3. It says, later Jesus sat on, sat on the Mount of Olives. His disciples came to him privately and said, tell us when all this will happen. What sign will signal your return and the end of the world? And verse 8 says, but all of this only are the first of the birth pains with more to come. Now, I want you to get this. Jesus begins to rattle off some signs. And he says, but these signs are like birth pains. So well, what is birth pains? Well, I've never had a baby. But I do know this. There's such thing as contractions. And when the contractions start at the beginning, they might be a little more dull and less frequent. The closer you get to having or giving birth, they become more frequent and more intense. So the signs that Jesus gave, he gave signs, have always been here on earth. But you'll know it's the last days because of the frequency and the intensity of these signs. So we're going to look at some signs tonight and wonder, are these the signs of Jesus coming back? Are they more frequent? Are they more intense? So Jesus goes along in Matthew 24, 4. He says, Jesus told them, don't let anyone mislead you. For many will come in my name claiming I'm the Messiah. They will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and threats of wars. But don't panic. Yes, these things must take place. But they won't follow immediately. Nation will go to war against nation. And kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world. But, but all of this only is the first of the birth pains with more to come. Someone say, first with more to come. First with more to come. Now, right now, we're going to look at, the, we're gonna look at some of these signs. And this is what's going to happen. They're happening now, but they're going to become more frequent and more intense as time goes by. It's already becoming more frequent and more intense because the labor pains and the contractions are pointing to a birth, are pointing to a second coming. Now, everything I'm going to talk about tonight is intense. But after the rapture, every sign that we talked about tonight is going to go off the scale and off the charts in the tribulation. The seven-year tribulation is going to be the worst time in the history of the world when it comes to pain, when it comes to suffering, when it comes to poverty, when it comes to catastrophes. We'll go into that maybe next week. The tribulation. What's going to happen at seven-year tribulation? But let's go ahead and look at this. Sign number one, wars and rumors of wars. 
out of 162 countries covered by the Institute of Economic Peace, latest study, just 11 were not involved in conflict of one kind or another. Worse still, the world as a whole has been getting, look at this, incrementally less peaceful every year since 2007. What they've noticed since 2007, the world has become less peaceful. Sharply bucking a trend that had seen global move away from, the global move away from conflict since the end of Second World, Second world War. Look at this. Right now, there are at least 27 live conflicts right now. According to the Council of Foreign Relations Global Conflict Tracker, there are 27 ongoing conflicts worldwide. The tractor, the tracker categorizes conflict in three groups, worsening, unchanging, and improving. Right now, there's not a single conflict described on the whole earth as improving. It's getting worse. According to the Council for Relations Global Tracker, look, it says global conflict and violence are on the rise. According to the United Nations, the UN has warned that peace is more under threat around the world than it has been since World War II. There's something brewing right now. And the people that are looking at the nations are saying peace is under threat. Right now, 3.2 billion people currently live in conflict-affected areas. A quarter of the entire global population lives in conflict-affected areas. Some of the worst affected places are Ethiopia, South Sudan, Syria, Yemen, Afghanistan. According to the UN, last year, 84 million people were forcibly displaced because of conflict, violence, and human rights violations. This year, it is estimated at least 274 million people will need humanitarian assistance. This is what it's saying. The, almost the whole population of the United States has no place to live because of war. We're right now living in, of course, you're in the safety of the U.S., but right now... Three point, look at this, 3.2 billion people are right now in conflict areas. They're in war, which is almost half of the whole population of Earth is under a place of war. Sign number two, increased violence. The Bible says it'll be like the days of Noah when Jesus Christ returns. In Matthew 24, 37, when the Son of Man returns, it will be like Noah's day. In Genesis 6.13 it says, so God said to Noah, I have decided to destroy all living creatures. For they have filled the earth with violence. Yes, I will wipe them all out along with the earth. So not only will there be an increase of war, but there will be an increase of violence. That means mankind will become more murderous. Do you know how many mass shootings have happened this year already? In the U.S., 314 mass shootings. There hasn't been a week this year that we haven't had at least four mass shootings. And the mass shootings where four or more people are killed or injured in one shooting. This last weekend... What was supposed to be a day of national celebration turned into a day of tragedy and fear when gunmen killed seven people and injured dozens of others on the 4th of July parade. Look at this. 64 mass shootings have taken place since a rampage at elementary school, Uvalde, Texas, left 19 children dead and two teachers dead on May 24th. 64 mass shootings. That they're realizing that this is throughout the world. In Chicago, last year, 800 homicides. Throughout the world, violence causes more than 1.6 million deaths worldwide every year. Violence is one of the leading causes of death in all the parts of the world. Globally, as many as 38% of all murders of women are committed by intimate partners. So this, this violence is actually invading our homes as well. These would be the signs of the last days. Are you guys with me? 
an increase. So under our state, are there going to be less mass shootings? More. Is there going to be more war? More. Because these are birth pains. And there's no human being that's going to be able to stop it. And that's why when the Antichrist comes, who's the Antichrist? He's going to be just like Jesus came in the flesh as a human. Satan is going to personify himself as a human being, a human being. And what he's going to do is all this conflict, he's going to try to solve it. And the world is going to be saying, please, we need your peace. We need your help. And they're going to gobble up the Antichrist as a world leader. Well, are you guys still with me? Sign number three, great famines. There will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world, but all of this are only the first of the birth pains with more to come. You'd be thinking that in a world like today with so much science and so much food and, and so many ways to farm, that there would be hardly any famine. But right now we got more people hungry and dying than we've ever had. Every second a person dies of hunger. Right now, check this out, more than one billion people suffer from hunger. This means one out of every six people on earth don't get enough food to live a healthy life. This year, 36 million people will die of hunger. One child dies every 10 minutes in Yemen according to the UN's report for August, 20, August 20, 2021. Children in Yemen are so hungry that they're eating their own hands. For six years, Yemen has been locked in a bloody civil war between the Saudi-supported government forces and healthy fighters backed by Iran. Nearly a quarter of a million people have been killed, but many have been pushed to the brink of starvation. Just think about this. We're not experiencing it. But there's people right now, a billion people, that are on the verge of dying. And a lot of them are little kids. And what's happened is some of the parents, because they're so desperate and they don't want to see their kids starve, they're selling their kids off as slaves. And some of the parents are selling some of their internal organs so they can get some money so they can get a little food for their kids. We're living, say, that's really happening? That's happening right now. Number four, increase in earthquakes. There will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world. It is estimated that there are 500,000 detectable earthquakes in the world each year. But look at this. This is the incremental part. The annual number of earthquakes nearly tripled over the last decade. Look at this. The annual number of earthquakes nearly tripled over the last decade, providing a reminder of Amer to Americans that the unruptured faults, like those in the northwest United States, might be due for a big one. Between 2004 and 2015, 18 earthquakes with magnitude of 8.0 or more rattles subjunction zones around the globe. That's an increase of 265% over the average rate of the previous century. So it's not just earthquakes. It's these earthquakes are becoming more frequent and they're more intense. Right now, just between that little time, 265% increase in earthquakes. Between 1998 and 2017, tsunamis caused more than 250 deaths globally, including more than 227 deaths due to the Indian Ocean tsunami in 2004. You know, when you talk about tsunamis, I grew up, I never heard of it about a tsunami. But we're living in a world right now where we like, we know what a tsunami is. I went to Hawaii the other day and they have tsunami zones and I go, get away from here. 227,000 227, people died. Just an earthquake on the ocean. We're aware in these last days of earthquakes. Maybe we weren't aware of the famine, but we're aware of the violence. And America is severely violent. We can't, I want you to get, I'm going to get into abortion and all that, but there's no way that we could be killing over 60 million babies 
and still value life. And we'll talk about that, whatever your take is. Well, we'll find out what the Bible says about this. But understand we're devaluating life and it overflows in every arena. And sign number five, and this is the last one I'll cover today, incurable diseases and pandemics. Wow. In Luke chapter 2, 21, 11 says, there will, be a might, there will be mighty and violent earthquakes, it says that, and various places, and in various places, famines, and pestilences, which are plagues, malignant and contagious or infectious epidemic diseases, which are deadly and devastating. I don't know about you, but I never knew anything about no, nothing like that until COVID hit. And COVID had the power to shut down the whole world. Many of us have experienced the death of COVID because our family members and friends were hit with this pandemic. Say, so where, where, what is this? It's a sign of the last days. It's getting worse. Look at this. Generally, look at this. Generally incurable and ongoing chronic diseases affect approximately 133 million Americans, which is almost 50% of the population has an incurable disease. You know what that means? We're becoming smarter scientifically, but we're becoming sicker as people. Representing more than 40% of the total population in this country, projected to grow to, 100 to, to 157 million, with 81 million having multiple conditions that are incurable. Alzheimer's is a new incurable ailment of the elderly. It's recently new. We are constantly hearing of serious outbreaks of such diseases as Ebola virus, which can destroy whole towns, a new disease. Ebola is known for the huge epidemic that broke out in 2014. It's recent, 2014 in West Africa. It, it was named after the Ebola River in Africa for from where it is said to have originated in 1976, it is characterized by extreme fever, profuse hemorrhaging, which is often fatal. To this day, despite extensive research, there is still no cure for this lethal disease. The fatality rate for humans affected by Ebola, Ebola is 90%. If you get this Ebola, you have a 90, you only have 10% survival rate. And there is no solution. There have been recent outbreaks of rare flesh-eating strep disease, which disfigures and even kills its victims in a matter of hours. All new stuff. There's also resistance of strains of conquer diseases, such as tuberculosis, and are now appearing. Some people are even wondering if these problems are the result of genetic engineering. So they're saying there's even diseases that we've conquered and they're coming back stronger. Look at this. Obviously, COVID-19 has killed over a million people. Over 90%, look at this, over 95% of the world's population has health problems. With over a third having more than five ailments. Nearly 50,000 men and women and children are dying every day from infectious disease. At least 30 new diseases have emerged in the last 20 years. What? What is going on? Birth pains, pandemics, diseases, earthquakes, violence, famine, and understand it's going to get worse. That's why you need the Lord. Come on. <laughs> One more disease like AIDS. I thought we conquered AIDS. Look what they're finding about AIDS. According to the UN, 38 million people are living with HIV. 5 million people are affected annually. And 3 million people die of AIDS each year, more than COVID. 3 million people are dying of AIDS. 
million people dying of COVID. Thousands of people are dying from diseases. Half of the United States population has an incurable disease. Are we in the last days? Come on. All I'm saying, I love the doctors, but you, we're getting to a place. You're going to you're gonna have to depend on the great doctor, the great physician. Come on. God wants to protect his people. And I believe there's going to be a demand on the church because we serve a God that's a healer and he's a deliverer and he's a savior. How many of you understand that? So, this is the last question. Why hasn't Jesus come yet then? As 2 Peter 3, 9 says, the Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he's being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed or left behind, but wants everyone to repent. But the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise and the very elements themselves will disappear in fire and earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. Everything that you see one day will be destroyed and remade the way it's supposed to be. The whole earth will deserve judgment. When Adam sinned, it affected the earth, it affected, it affected the grass, it affected, it affected, it affected the mountains, it affected the trees, everything dies. But when Jesus comes back, he's coming to restore everything. And we're going to live in a world that's perfect. Ain't nothing going to be great? Nothing dies. So we went through these signs pretty quick. But as we study this, I don't, I don't think that we could deny that any one of these signs are not being, that we're not seeing, or it's not becoming more frequent or more intense. If we really go into war, huge wars nowadays, the weapons that they have of mass destruction could take out millions of people. Chemical warfare could take out cities in moments. We're living in a time in the last days that if anybody's going to be alert, let it be us. And what are we going to do? Help our family get alert. How many believe Jesus Christ is coming back soon? Jesus said it. Let's all stand up. Are we learning some stuff? Come on. Next week, next week, next week, I... Next week, there's a sign that I might want to cover next. Uh, I'm going to go into the tribulation too, but next week there's a sign that the Bible says that sin will be rampant everywhere. And I want to discuss how as a society and in the world, how we're becoming more sinful. And that would be a sign of Jesus coming back real soon. You do not want to miss it. We're going to discuss all the issues of our day. And understand we're in warfare right now. And we're warfare for souls, but we're also a warfare for conviction. Even the church, the Bible says in the last days, men won't, won't endure sound doctrine. They won't preach this in a lot of churches anymore. Because they say, oh, you're trying to scare the people. I'm not trying to scare the people. Jesus taught us. We're just teaching what Jesus taught. And he taught us so we could. It's okay to be scared about reality. And be prepared. So I, I, before we leave here, I want to make sure the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. This is your day. And how do you come to Jesus? Just the way you are. If you recognize, man, I, I got some dirty clothes, got some skeletons in my closet. There's been things I've been doing that I'm not proud of and and I want Jesus to cleanse me, forgive me. I'm done living my way. I want to be saved. I want eternal life. I do not want to be left behind. Today's your day. The Bible says Jesus is knocking at your heart's door. He says if anybody will open up, he'll come in. He loves you. And why is he waiting? He doesn't want anybody to be lost. That's it. 
So Jesus could come back now because all the signs, all the precursor signs for him to show up have already happened. All the prophetic check marks before Jesus needs to come back are already here. The only reason that Jesus is not back yet, the Father is waiting for many to get ready. And all I'm telling you is that God doesn't want to judge you. That's what it says. That's why he sent his son to be judged. But the scripture says that Jesus did not come to judge, but he came to save you. He came to make you whole. He came to forgive you. He came to give you a brand new life. So how do you come to Jesus? You don't fix your life and come to Jesus. You come the way you are. He forgives you. And he transforms your life. He comes in and makes you into a new person. And he gives you the free gift of eternal life. It's not something you could earn, but it's something you could receive, believe and receive. Today's your day. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. I love you. God loves you. We're talking about end times. How many believe we're in the end times? Like, wait a second, it's all here. And it's becoming more and more frequent. There's not a sign that's not prevalent today. I'm going to count to three. You say, Pastor, that's me. I want to be forgiven of my sins. I don't want to be left behind. I want to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. The Bible says this, there's only one name to call on to be saved. That God's given man to be saved and it's Jesus. Why? He's the one that died for your sins. He's the one that conquered death. He's the only one that can give you eternal life. One name, Jesus. He loves you. He cares about you. He brought you here today so you can have a new start, new beginning. He changes you. He gives you new desires. He gives you a new heart. He gives you eternal life. He forgives you. Wouldn't it be great to have a brand new start and forgive yourself and get a new start and that God establishes you so you can live this new life? When I count to three, you never know when it's going to be the last sermon. This could be it. Could be the last one online. Could be the last one you hear. Could be the last one I preach. Jesus could come back this week. But the truth is, time's running out. Your time's running out. And the only thing that matters, how much money you made, what relationships you're in, what's going to matter is whether you receive Jesus Christ or not. Have you placed your faith in Jesus alone as your Savior? Today's your day. One, when I say three, you might want to recommit your life to the Lord. Somebody needs to recommit your life. Don't be, don't harden your heart. Get right with God today. Give your life to Jesus. You need a new start. Forget about fixing your problems. Let God fix you. Two, if you say, Pastor, I'm not sure about to die right now. I go to heaven. Or if Jesus came right now, I'm not sure I would go. I think I might be left behind. Don't leave here the same way. You can have assurance of salvation. Anyone that calls upon the name of the Lord today will be saved. When I say three, give, raise your hand. Say, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to recommit my life to Jesus. I want to be saved. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this building. I see those hands all over the building. There, 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 there. I see those hands over here. I see the hand there. Anybody else? I see the hand there. I see those hands way in the back. I want those to raise their hand. We do one, one more big favor. We leave your seat and come forward real quick. Will you give me the honor and privilege of praying with you? As you're coming up, you're saying this. I'm leaving my own life in those seats. I'm starting a new life with the Lord today. Come on. Let's give the Lord a hand. As people are giving their lives to Jesus. Ask your name. If you want to go up there, go up there with you. Someone's name is written, written, being written in the last book of life in heaven. Come on, they're still coming, they're still coming. Ask your name if you want to go up there, go up there with you. Come on, this is a, this is a good time for positive peer pressure. Come on, this is your day. Give your life to Jesus.
A lot of you fought to get here today. And it was a fight to come up here, but I'm so proud you did. Heaven has been seeking after you. God just wants a relationship with you. This is what we do, we repent of our sins. That means I know the darkness I've been involved with. Jesus, I'm done with it. Save me. And you might be thinking, well, I can't stop. The Bible says, who the Son says free is free indeed. He can set you free. That's the miracle. I'm not offering you religion. The power of Jesus Christ, the one who resurrected from the dead, that power is going to give you a new life today. All you have to do is be willing to exchange. Exchange your sin life for the God life. It's your day. When Jesus Christ comes back, he's going to be able to say, come on. Well done, good and faithful servant. You accepted me. You confessed me before men. I'll confess you before my father. Come on. Salvation is not something some you earn. It's something you receive by faith. You can't earn this. It's a gift. Eternal life is a gift. Say it with me. Eternal life is a gift. So we're going we're gonna to make a decision to follow Jesus today. Accept him as our Lord and Savior. Your next step after this, you have another step, is baptism. And then I'll say this. Give us a year of your life. Keep coming to church. Start growing. A year of life, I guarantee your life will never change. I mean, it will never be the same. It will completely change. Let's pray. Let's pray together. Believe, repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I believe that you love me. I know that I'm a sinner that deserves judgment. But you love me so much. You sent your son to take my place, to be punished die for the wrong I've done so that I can be forgiven. Thank you, Jesus, for taking my place. Forgive me. Set me free. Make me new. I receive you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit and power. From this day forward, I'm saved, I'm born again, and I am a disciple, a follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Today, someone gave their life to Jesus. We're going to pray for you. I want to make sure we get your information, help you on your next step. God bless you, church. This Sunday, you don't want to miss it. We'll be here 9 and 11 and 130 for Spanish. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Enjoy your time. You need prayer. Come on up. We'd love to pray with you.